So my channel is really random. It's based totally on how I feel. Sometimes I don't do second parts of the videos. And yeah, I just kind of go on a whim. It's mostly, I like to blow off steam, share, connect. So that's why my videos are so random. Um, that being said, today I'm going to show you my Martha Chase dolls because I forgot to do an unboxing video of them and I thought that would have been cool. But I, when I went to look for information about them online, I didn't really see a lot. So I thought, thought I'd throw this out there. Maybe a couple people see it. Maybe they'll like it. I don't know. Making this video is preventing me from going out and buying more dolls. So at least there's that. Um... To get started, I'm going to give you a little brief history lesson. I got this book on cloth dolls by Linda Edwards. I want to say it was like 20 bucks. It does give you way more information than you can just find online. And antique cloth dolls are a rabbit hole, a very fun rabbit hole. But I'm just going to read to you a little bit about Martha Chase dolls. So here we go. Born in Pawtucket, Rhode Island, Martha Jenks Chase created and manufactured cloth dolls from 1889 and on. Miss Chase was the daughter of a doctor and later married a doctor. She was also the mother of seven, so it is no surprise that she became interested in making a doll that would at once be lovable and hygienic, the goal at which she achieved with her dolls. Although made of cloth, these dolls were oil painted and varnished, which did indeed make them washable. She selected the materials for her dolls with great care, choosing cotton batting for stuffing and zinc-based paint, which she assured her customers was completely non-poisonous and durable. The heads were made by pressing a heavily sized stockinette into a mold and then stuffing it firmly with cotton batting. The stuffed cotton limbs and head were then sewn into the body. The ears and thumbs were applied and the doll was painted. In a letter dated 1945, Martha's daughter, Anna Sheldon, states that the family still possessed the Isana Walker doll, which had belonged to her mother as a child. The doll was purchased from Miss Walker in 1868, and Anna tells us that this doll was the inspiration for the dolls designed by her mother. Martha's first dolls were made for her own children, but soon relatives and neighbors were requesting dolls of their own. One day, in 1891, she took one of her dolls to the Jordan Marsh store in Boston to find a suitable pair of shoes for it, and she inadvertently entered into the doll making as a business. The buyer for the toy department spotted her trying shoes on her doll and immediately placed an order for the store. So began a business that would last for decades. Behind her home was a small building which she called the Doll House, and it was there that her dolls were made. Working with a group of specially trained and highly artistic women, the atmosphere of the workshop was one of conviviality, so friendliness. Martha and her employees were referred to themselves as a family. Some work, such as stowing and stuffing, was sent out to women working at home, but all the painting was done at the dollhouse under Miss Chase's direct supervision. The early Chase dolls were made of stockinette with white sateen bodies, some were pink, and were jointed at the elbows and knees as well as at the hips and shoulders. Chase employed a very distinctive style of painting on these dolls, particularly a heavy textured painting on the hair and multi-stroked eyelashes, both of which are characteristics enough to proclaim a true Chase doll. Chase dolls were marked with their trademark on their upper leg or under the arm. The earlier marks are stamped on and later a decal was used. Chase dolls came as girls, boys, or babies, as depicted by their hairstyle. From 1920 on, the bodies of Chase dolls were made of cotton, which was oil painted all over and were jointed only at the hips and shoulders. Miss Chase also made character dolls such as Alice in Wonderland and Friends, Dickens characters, Black Mammies, George Washington, and Fashionable Ladies, as well as others. So there's a little bit more in there, but... That's like most of the main stuff that I didn't find just by Googling. Um, and then here is a nice little shot of the markings. And you'll see one of those on one of my babies that I have. So yeah, let's get to the dolls. The first one I will show you is a 16 inch doll with blonde hair. to get it focused so you can really see the construction of the head there you go there's a little applied ears 
Let's see. Sorry. She really does have some nice eyelashes. But my camera doesn't want to focus on them. And you can see the really heavy, thick, painted hair. And I'm going to pause this for just a second. Now she's in her little undies, but I just wanted to show you her joints. And as you can see, she has the white, I think, sateen body. It's kind of, I don't know if you can tell by the video, but it's not all painted. So from what I read in the book, that leads me to believe it's a pre-1920 doll. If you know how to tell the year other than that, let me know. And then she actually does have the little mark on her leg, which I love to see that. But she's totally adorable. I love her so much. And I will try to take very good care of her. I'll put her back in her dress in just a moment. But yeah, see, look at her little applied ears. Pretty cool. I'm going to set her over here. And when I've watched other videos of Chase dolls, people are wearing gloves handling them. So... Maybe I'll do that in the future. It seems like a good idea. I believe they were made in 8 inches to 30 inches, I think, were the size or inches that it was made in. And then researching them, I've just uh, read that the smaller sizes were more rare. So here is a 12 inch one. Her hair is not quite in as good a condition as the other one. And you can't see as many of her eyelashes, but I still, I just love the little expression that's on her face. And you can still, she still has her little rosy cheeks. Applied ears. You can tell she's in played with condition, so she's had a lot of fun adventures in her little life. She's not marked, but I know a lot of them are not. One seller that I talked to said, you'll see more that aren't marked than are. And here's her little joints. And her paint's in really good condition. So you can tell that mine are in played with condition. The really pristine ones are super expensive. Um, I kind of like the charm that this one gives them. And then here's her adorable little hat. This hat was actually one of the main selling points for me. She just, she looks so serious, but then she has this little pointy hat. I think it's really cute. So, anyways, thanks for watching. Those are my Martha Chase dolls, and I am in love with them. Oh, and uh, if you like this doll in the back, oh, she's heavy. Hold on. Oh. She's been sitting on the couch, kind of watching. Uh, She's made by Twisted Beanstalk Nursery on Etsy, and she's weighted with beads inside, and she's really cuddly, and she's actually kind of a doll that's supposed to help with anxiety, so, I mean, I think, I think she kind of does, and I'm just really, I mean, you know, I'm into Reborns, so I'm even into the alternative Reborns like this one, but she just has really beautiful craftsmanship and so yeah just throwing a shout out to twisted beanstalk nursery on there too randomly in a martha chase video because she's on my couch we'll just put it right there anyways thanks for watching um yeah have a good day